Hey, what's going on guys? For any of you that have seen Gundam 0080, you know that the story comes to a dramatic close with the Alex facing off against the Zaku 2 FZ, but we all know that the real star of the show on the Xeon side was always really the camphor. It's a fan favorite and certainly one of the most memorable and menacing looking mobile suits on the Xeon side, I think I would say in kind of all of history is definitely a very cool mobile suit. It's loaded up with a bunch of weapons and it's just got this cool look to it. It's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and check out the HGUC kit which originally came out all the way back in 2008. We'll see how well it holds up now going on more than 12 years. Just taking a look at the box art here, nothing really going on in the background, it's just kind of just the camphor all loaded up here firing its classic shotgun. We also got the bazookas up over the shoulder, the Panzerfausts or Sturmfaust, which are the calling Gundam, I get confused now. But those are there on its legs and then it's also got the chain mine of course, which we'll see, it's not pictured on the front there, but this is number 89 in the HGUC line. On the bottom of the box here you can see a very dark image of what it looks like all painted up, front and back there, all loaded up as well too. Once again, uh, some more information there about the mobile suit in there. You can see it with the chain mine, some other stats over here on this side, and go around here onto the top. We can see some more details about that. So we're, I'm guessing we're going to have like, just a wire going in there uh, for that. Shotgun has kind of two different forms. You can make it without or with the back part of that extended out. It does also have a beam saber in case you needed any more weapons for this. And there it is just kind of flying along too. It's got some markings and everything included here as well. The list price for this one came out at around 1800 yen. So not too bad. It's about what I would imagine. Up inside of here, let's see what we got. Five bags of runners and our instruction manual here. So once again, just like on the outside of the boxes, that same photograph of the kit that's a little bit darkly lit, but there it is looking pretty cool. How is it going to compare to the Master Grade, I'm wondering. The Master Grade is also pretty old, and a lot of people have their complaints about it, but I never really felt it was that bad, to be honest. Here we go on the back side, I'm guessing we're not going to see a lot of this yellow here in the kit, would be my estimation. All the inside of these thruster bells and everything would make great uh, detail for the kit, but, you know, with it being an HG, that type of thing is not something we normally see, but it does look really cool there. There's all the weapons and everything, the markings for it. Again, just a little bit about the mobile suit there. And then down here at the bottom, our color guide there in Japanese. Opening this up to the center pages, we got some more information about the mobile suit and its different weapons and everything here. It does look like it can do a pretty good wide stance there. So that's looking pretty nice. And then it's basically just all about equipping the weapons and everything. There's a lot of weapons to build, so a lot of instructions to cover all of that. But here we do also have our parts list. And it looks like you're going to be using everything except for a couple of polycaps, basically. So let's go ahead and check out the runners. For our foil stickers here, guys, as you can see, it's just a tiny little sticker sheet of just a couple of white ones and a couple of little pink dots. And our marking stickers here are equally small, as so we just have a couple of marking logos on there, and that's pretty much it. We got SB6 for our beam saber effect parts here in clear yellow, and our black wire here that we're going to use for the chain mine, and a PC132 here for our polycaps for the kit in gray. And our A runner here for the kit is in three colors. We do have some yellow parts there and it's in that nice orangey yellow there for some thruster details. Mostly gray here on this runner and then some black parts up there across the top as well. Runner B here is in that nice slightly desaturated blue color here for the main color of the armor. We got some more of that here on runner C for all these symmetrical armor parts. So we've got two of this C runner. Runner D here is in gray for just a bunch of weapons parts basically and we've got two of this D runner. So lots of weapons to build with this kit. Then runner E also in gray but this is in ABS plastic here for some joint parts and that's it. So there you have it guys, totally understandable why this mobile seat would be so popular. I just wonder how the kit is going to hold up. It's pretty old at this point but honestly looking at the kit so far it seems like it's going to be pretty solid. Just definitely missing some paint color apps with all the little yellow bits in there like I mentioned before but I think it's going to be a pretty good one so let's go ahead and check it out. Alright guys, here is the blue boy all built up, looking very cool. I mean, it, it does look a little bit bare though, without any weapons or anything on it, because we're so used to seeing the camphor with you know, at least some weapons on the backpack or on the legs or something, it's gotta have something. So it looks a bit weird without anything on it, but it does look good for the most part. So you got a couple of seam lines on there, and it's definitely missing some color apps. So I mean, if you wanted to get it to looking totally anime accurate, you do have your work cut out for you, but it is a pretty cool looking HG kit. Let's go ahead and get into it, because we got a lot of accessories to go through. So let's just start off with our hand options. As you can see on there, you just got a couple of holding hands. Then we do also have a set of trigger finger hands for the left and the right side. 
and an open hand for the left side only. It can be an open hand or like a rifle support hand. And so of course we've got the classic shotgun. We've got two of these and you do have options for whether you want to have this with the longer extended back or you can just take that off very easily. Swap that out for just the shorter handle like that if you prefer. So you've got options you could have both long, both short or one of each like that. Obviously pretty simple in their design, just a couple of parts. You will have the seam lines on those, but the design and just the general idea of using shotguns is pretty unusual in Gundam uh, universes, so it all is very unique. And with this connector piece here, this can also be plugged onto the back skirt, just kind of the back of the waist section, actually, pretty much just basically like that. Goes on there very simply. You can only plug one on there, you can't plug both, but you can plug one onto there for storage, very cool. Then of course, we've got the bazookas. Once again, two of these as well. They're gonna be exactly the same, so the camera is gonna be on one side, so if you got them up on like dual wielding, they won't be symmetrical in that like the camera will be on the same side anyway, like that. Well, this one as well, really cool. The handle does move forward and back, so you'll have no problem getting that up over the shoulder. Once again, of course, we will have seam lines on this. It's pretty basic in its construction, just a couple of pieces. But again, the detail on it, there we go, does look pretty nice. So, you know, once you get those seam lines cleaned up and get this painted, it's gonna look really good. Now these ones as well, we've got uh, connection pieces for these to connect these onto the backpack. So right on that little ring right there, that will just clip onto that and then just plug this right onto the side. Again, it's not really so much of a backpack, but like the, just the back of the body and fold up the handle there like that but those fit onto there very nicely to have the bazookas now loaded up onto the backpack like that we're getting pretty full now but of course then we do also have the sturm Foss, just these handheld uh, grenade weapons that you can throw launch at your enemies these ones as well just going to be pretty simple with a seam line there on the end of these also but these do also have connection pieces so you just uh, slip this right into here like that and then this plugs right onto the side of the leg here one on the left and one on the right and now we're getting pretty full up but we still got a couple of empty hands with nothing in them so why don't we go ahead and look at a couple of our other auxiliary handheld weapons here you got the two beam sabers the beam saber handles are technically there in the thigh but those don't actually pop out they're not actually working as they should as they're supposed to in canon so these are just extra so they had to hold these but you got two of those and of course the chain mine so not only does this have uh, classic weapons like the shotgun but it's got the chain mine it's just got a lot of really unique awesome cool unique weapons so this one if you guys watched the live stream build of this i had a little bit of trouble because the manual is not very clear as to where you're supposed to place these along this wire there's not like there's nothing holding them in place so you just kind of had to put them on there and space them out just you had to just kind of eyeball it but it seems to be about just for your guys's reference what I'm noticing is it's about one centimeter between each piece it seems to be basically so you've got five open ones here at the end like that for when they're supposed to be like actually be attached onto something and then eight closed ones there. So you got a pretty good length today. Obviously, just if you're holding onto the handle there, it's not going to stay up very well at all. So this wire, you know, not very strong. It's meant not for being able to look like it's actually flying through the air, but you can like kind of wrap it around and have it looking like it's like wrapped around another mobile suit or something like that. You should be able to do that with, with no problem. So it's got a ton of weapons and accessories there, as you guys can see, which is awesome. But how is the base kit itself? As for the stickers, you basically just have the one there for the mono eye and these white stickers, which wrap around the horn and and this spike over here on the shoulder. We do have a number of seam lines, as I mentioned. So going here on the shoulder armor, you've got seam lines there and there. Around here on the back of the thigh, you've got seam line going down the middle of this section here on the front. It's just kind of hidden in there as a sort of a seam or a panel line kind of between the armor panels there. And the same thing for here, like this little one there on the front of the shin, that's just kind of made to look like a panel line, so that's fine. But here on the back, on this lower section there, there's a bit of a seam line there as well too. So I mean, really, I guess I guess maybe I oversold it a little bit. Not too many seam lines, but you do have a couple of ones that'll be kind of tricky, like the one there on the thigh, and then the one on the shoulder, most notably, I guess, will be. And then all the ones on the weapons, I guess, of course, too. The marking stickers as well do look kind of okay, but you're placing them on a dark color plastic, so you will see the outline of them pretty well. But I mean, from a distance, they look, they're nice little additions to be added onto there. The Mono Eye does not move, so if you wanted to have that move, you basically just have to move the sticker around. Uh, that's kind of inconvenient, but the head will go up to about there, not really up all that far. It would have been nice if that would maybe go up a little bit more, but then it can point it down all the way down to there. It's just a really cool head design for this as well, too. As you guys know, I'm really not a big fan of any sort of like bird motifs on my mobile suits, but this one having like sort of a little bit of a bird-shaped head with a little beak there. I do like it. It's a cool look for the camper anyway. So that will go side to side and move around a little bit, but just not really up and down all that much, unfortunately. 
The shoulder will swing a little bit out to the front there like that and the shoulder armor itself will be able to move. Actually, this outer part is just kind of on a ball joint so you can move that around. The shoulder itself will be able to rotate to up to about 90 degrees. That seems to be about the extent of that. Unfortunately, then you got some rotation there at the top. A single joint there in the elbow giving you about 90 degrees but because of the shape of the forearm the wrist is going to actually come up a little bit more than 90 degrees but just because the forearm is kind of a little bit curved where normally it would be more kind of straight on the wrist of course is just on a ball joint there we do have some pretty nice articulation here in the stomach section so you have a pretty good ab crunch for that and side to side not really so much rotation obviously you're kind of free for anywhere rotating that skirting armor doesn't really exist so you don't really have to worry about that the hips are just ball and socket joints, so they will be a little bit limited in terms of their rotation and bringing them out to the side. But I mean, that's pretty wide enough. I think you should be able to pretty much pull off any pose you want uh, with that. You are able to plug this onto an action base with uh, removing this little cap here on the underside of the waist section there. It just plugs onto your standard three millimeter action base adapter plug there. And obviously without any skirting armor, you can bring the leg up very far to the front there. You got a double joint here in the knee, but it's kind of blocked by this thruster there on the back of the leg. Unfortunately, there's just kind of no way around that. So the knee bend is going to be pretty limited. And the ankle joint here is just also on a ball joint. So you can move that a little bit side to side, forward a little bit, back a little bit. It's all just one solid piece. So the toe doesn't bend on its own, unfortunately. But you do have some nice detail up underneath there. It's just all in blue. So it would've been nice if this bottom part was actually gray or something, but a lot of nice detail there to go ahead and paint in there for you guys. And speaking of painting in, like I mentioned before, a lot of missing color apps inside all these little thrust barrels here on the side of the leg in the back of the leg and be like here and back here it's supposed to be orange all inside there and it's obviously not you have orange up in here in the shoulders which looks nice here on the chest so like if you're looking at the kit from the front basically it looks better it's just if you're looking at it from the back you're going to notice all the missing orange in there unfortunately just on a quick side note in case that was not enough weapons for you wanted to use something else like say for example the machine gun of the zaku 2 f2 hd kit or for example any of the other like hd the origin zaku weapons they're all kind of basically the same the hands of the two kit are going to be virtually identical except for one small difference is that the camphor's hands don't have the little peg hole in there for plugging the handle into there so you should be able to make it fit basically all you have to do is just cut off that little peg and this would fit in the hand fine. But the Zaku 2 F2 kit, and I believe all the Origin kits as well too, I'll have that little hole in there for a little bit better support of the weapons where the camphor does not, but otherwise the hands are basically exactly the same. Now, of course, the other option that you could do is just swap the panels for the back of the hand because those are exactly the same. So, I mean, if you want to use this, you didn't want to cut the peg off the handle there. You wanted to use the hand from the HG Zaku 2 F2, for example. You just take your hand for the cover for the, from the camphor, plug it on there, and then you don't need to cut or modify anything. It's just a simple swap like that. There you have it guys, so with no shortage of weapon options for this, it's going to be one of those kits that you can really have a lot of fun posing. If you're the kind of person that likes to change the poses a lot on your kits, then you're definitely going to really enjoy this. You know, if you don't like just uh, setting it up on your shelf and leaving it there, if you like, you know, changing the poses every now and then, especially if you're into like toy photography as well too, you like taking a lot of pictures of your kits, uh, and in, uh, doing a lot of different poses and things like that, especially if you want to bring in your kit of the Alex, you know, you want to recreate scenes from the anime, you've got all the stuff in there and you can do a lot of really great stuff with this kit. Now, like I said, not completely color accurate and the articulation is not amazing, but the articulation is pretty good and I think you should be able to pull off pretty much any pose that you've seen in the anime for the most part. So I gotta say, despite a couple of weak points, this is certainly an overwhelmingly positive kit, a really great kit if you guys are a fan of the camphor, definitely check it out. Now, of course, you have the option of the Master Grade as well too. The Master Grade has its pros and cons as well. It has a little bit more, a better color separation as it has some more of those bright yellow parts that are gonna be going around in the thrusters things like that for example but it does also have its fair share of seam lines and uh, articulation weak points as well too with that one also as for just like the general design and details and proportions of them I would say they're both good in my opinion you might have to you know look at them both and see which one you maybe prefer because they are a little bit different in their just general proportions but it's small differences in my opinion they're both they both look good I've heard a lot of people over the years talking about wanting a camphor 2.0 I think now that we've got an Alex 2.0 kit it is more possible that we might get a 2.0 master grade camphor at some point in the future it's not something I would necessarily put my money on anytime soon but you know if and when that does ever happen I'm sure it will be really cool uh, that said the master grade as it is the 1.0 is not bad so if you're a fan of it and you like 100 scale kits you prefer that over 100 over 144 scale definitely check out the master grade but if you just want to just a cool nice high grade of the kit this one definitely fits the bill so I'd highly recommend you guys to check out this kit. So uh, once again, if you want to check out this kit and everything else that we've got there in store at USA Gundam Store, you can check that out the link down in the video description below.
below. You can use my code there, Zakurilius10, to save 10% off everything there on the site as well too. So thank you guys so much for checking that out. And thank you so much for watching the video today. If you have any other questions or comments, of course, do feel free to leave those down below. And really appreciate your guys' support here as well too, whether it be liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's also greatly appreciated. So thank you guys all so much. I'll see you all later. Bye guys.